Okay, today's lesson is going to continue with this idea of congruent angles and parallel lines. So if you remember in the last lesson, we learned that if we had certain pairs of congruent or supplementary angles, we could say the lines are parallel. Today, if you look at the targets, you can see that we're going to go the other way. We're going to reverse those theorems, and we're going to say that if we're starting with parallel lines, then we should have these pairs of angles that are either congruent or supplementary. So here I've given you two parallel lines, um, and it says label all of the other angles in terms of x. So I'm going to start with vertical angles. These two right here would be corresponding. These two would be vertical, or these two would be corresponding. I knew these are supplementary angles, so if this is x, this one must be 180 minus x, the same as this guy right here. And then verticals would make this 180 minus x. Corresponding, make this 180 minus x, and then of course this would be vertical with it, so it would also be 180 minus x. So you can see by that, as soon as we have parallel lines, all of the angles either match, like all these x's match, or all these 180 minus x's match, so they're either congruent or they're supplementary. These two angles are supplementary, these two are supplementary, this is supplementary to this, these two here are supplementary. So those are the only two relationships that exist. So we're going to describe that in theorems now. We're going to reverse those ones we had yesterday or the day before. We had um, if alternate interior angles were congruent, then the lines are parallel. So now we're going to start with if the lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Hopefully now you know where those angles are. Again, you can make yourself another picture. Uh, we also had alternate exterior, so if the lines are parallel, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. Alright, so let's find a pair of alternate exteriors from those parallel lines. We had corresponding angles, so we could say if parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. All right, so let's get another set of parallel lines. I'll pick a pair of correspondings, but you might have picked something different. Uh, those are all the ones that we have with congruences. So now let's talk about um, the supplementary pieces. If you remember, those are same side angles. So we could say if parallel, then I'll start with same side interior angles are sup. So if I have two parallel lines, I know that those two angles are supplementary. All right, let's flip. We also know that same side exteriors are supplementary. So let's put that at the top of this page here. Same idea if we have parallel lines, then same side exterior angles are sup, and we can do a quick sketch, parallel lines transversal, same side exteriors would be this angle, for example, and this angle would be sup. All right, if you remember back in the last section, we also um, had one that it said if two lines were perpendicular to the same line, they're parallel. So we're going to build off that a little bit, and we're going to say if you're perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then you're perpendicular to the other. And that kind of comes from the one we just had. So in other words, right, if uh, if these two are parallel, and let's call this A and B and C, so if C is perpendicular to A and A and B are parallel, then C would be perpendicular to B. But of course you'd have to have this parallel piece here. All right, and then the last one um, is just kind of a, a, we call it often a parallel transitive I'm going to put in the box here. You can kind of guess probably what it means from that. So if, if A is parallel to B and B is parallel to C, 
All right, then wouldn't A have to be parallel to C? So if A is parallel to B and B is parallel to C, then A is parallel to C. If you ever need to use that, you can just simply say parallel transitive, but we'll write it like this. We'll say if two lines are parallel to a third line, then they're parallel to each other. Okay. Uh, transitive doesn't work on everything we have. It certainly works with congruence, and now we can see it would also make sense to work with the idea of parallel. So let's do just a couple of proofs today. We'll save some for tomorrow. I'll show you how this works. It's very similar to what you were doing yesterday. I have FA parallel to DE, and I have FA congruent to DE, so let's mark that. And I also have AB congruent to CD. You're going to see a lot more parallel in the given because, of course, my if is going to start with parallel lines, right? That's what we were working today. We had if parallel. All right, so let's highlight them just as we did before. We have those are parallel, right? The only line I see connecting those two orange ones is this guy right here. And as soon as I highlight that, I see that I have a Z. So I believe I can get angle A congruent to angle D. And that Z means they're alternate interior. So notice if parallel, because that's what I began with, then alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, it looks like I can probably go after some congruent triangles here because F and E will be corresponding parts. All right, I have an angle, I have a side. Um, and I also forgot to mark here that I have AB congruent to CD. So I see two segments with a space in between. I know I can add to get AC congruent to BD. Those are some old ideas there. So if that would be same seg is added to congruent segs, then the sums are congruent. And then I believe you can see we have these two triangles by side, angle, side. So I'm going to say triangle FAC congruent to triangle EDB by side, angle, side, and then angle F and angle E are simply corresponding parts. So if triangles are congruent, then corresponding parts are congruent. Okay, so it can be just as simple as that. Instead of getting angles to get us parallel lines, we're going to start with parallel lines and use those to get some angles congruent. All right, let's try this one. We have angle 1 congruent to angle 2. Those are out here. Immediately when you mark those, I hope you're thinking of an old idea, that supplementary idea, because those 1 and 2 are hiding outside the triangles. I have AB congruent to FE. And I also have AB parallel to FE, so let's mark that as well. Let's start with that parallel. Let's see how that helps us here. Parallel, parallel. Where's my transversal? The only one connecting those two orange lines is this guy right here. Very similar to what you can see above there. We have a Z, so I believe we have alternate interior angles here. This guy and this guy. So let's say that is what angle B, I can say, congruent to angle E. There's only one angle there. If parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, so I have an angle and a side, so it's a lot like the one above, but now I have to use one and two. All right, it's that supplementary process. We used to do three steps. We used to say we had a straight angle. That was assumed, and then we stated the supplementary, and then we used our theorem. Um, I am going to let you take that assumed statement out of your proof. I'm not going to ask you to say that anymore. If you want to, you can, but you're going to notice now that I'm going to be skipping that assumed statement, so I'm going to go right to the supplementaries. I'm going to say angle 1 is sub to angle BAC. Angle 2 is sub to angle, uh, what am I, EFD. If angle sum equals 180, 
then sup. So this was normally the second step, but again, we're going to skip that assumed statement. Put them in the box, right? I have 1 and 2 congruent in the given. Therefore, by my theorem, I know that angle BAC is congruent to angle EFD. That's if angles sup two congruent angles, then they are congruent. That was from the beginning of the year. Let's mark those. That's those two. Now I think my triangles are congruent by side angle side. So triangle BAC congruent to triangle EFD. That would be by angle side angle. So get your triangle congruence correct. But now the question is, I don't need corresponding parts. I need this. I need AC congruent to DF or not congruent, I'm sorry, parallel. And the only way I can get parallel lines is to get a pair of angles. So the question is, what angles from those two triangles will help me get these two lines parallel? Hopefully you realize the only transversal is this guy right here. So if you look closely at the triangles, the only related angles are these two right here that I'm going to dot. All right? Those are actually, if you extend the lines, if you're having trouble seeing it, those are actually alternate exterior angles, right? Here's the between the lines, so they're on the outsides of those green lines, and they're on opposite sides of this transversal. So these are the two that I'm going to pick from these triangles. So I'm going to say angle ACB is congruent to angle FDE. by if triangles congruent, then corresponding parts are congruent, and then because those two angles are congruent, I can now get my parallel lines. AC parallel to DF, and that would be if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then parallel. We do not see that one come up as often, so really look for those alternate exterior angles. All right, I want you to flip past the next three proofs. We're going to do those in the next video, but I want to take a look at the very last kind of problem. Um, these are a special kind of problem. They're called crook problems. You're going to see these come up a lot, right? Sort of where you have two parallel lines, for example, like A and B, and then we have these two segments in here that kind of make this crook, right? And it says find the measure of angle one, which is this angle right here. So here's the trick. I'm going to say draw a parallel line through that crook. So here's the crook right here. Here's where it bends. So I'm going to put a parallel line just like this in here. And then I'm going to use everything I know about the pairs of angles. All right. So let's start, for example, with this green one and this green one. Here's a transversal. Right? And as soon as I do that, I see a Z using this 40, I would know this angle right here is 40. All right? But then I also have these pink ones up here with this transversal. And the question is, how can I use that 100? Well, that 100 would be alternate exteriors over here with 100. But I need to know about this angle. And that would ultimately help you. But think, aren't these two angles right here same side interiors? And we know same side interiors are sup. So I'm going to use that idea to say that this part right here has to be 80. And then together, 80 plus 40 makes 120. So these are not hard problems. You just have to remember to add this parallel line. So here we have a double crook on this one. So I'm going to put in two parallel lines. I'm going to put in one here, and I'm going to put in one here. All right. We could start up here if you want. We could start with this green parallel line and this green one, because I have that 100. There's my transversal, All right? So 100 and this angle right here, these two would be same side interior. So this angle should be 80, right? But now I know this is a right angle. So if this is 80, that means this part right here has to be 10. All right, so now if I work my way down and I do these two parallel lines and this transversal, right? I'm working towards this x, so how does this 10 help me? 
this 10 and this part of the x right here should also be 10 because they are alternate interior angles. And now if I work on the bottom, how do these last pair down here help me? Here's the transversal. How does that 20 help me? Well, if this is 20, alternate exterior would be, or not alternate exterior, alternate interior, this one would also be 20 if they're parallel. So now I'm looking at x, it's 10 and it's 20, so together it is... 30 degrees. And those are called crook problems. You'll see some of those in the homework as well. That's it for this first part of the lesson.